2022 has been a year of inflation, major supply chain disruptions, high gas prices, and grocery prices up 11% from last year. You tell yourself, you know, I'm an adult, I'm supposed to take care of myself, I have children. We work every day, you know, people just don't make enough. Thank you. All Americans have felt the pinch, but there's a region of the country where people say they're fighting 40% inflation. They're the farmers who grow our food. You know, we feed Europe, we feed the United States. Every input that a farmer buys is at least 100% more to 140% more. People need to understand we gotta have these farmers. We, we need them. They are so crucial to the whole economy, you know, to the United States and the world. In partnership with the Indianapolis Star and reporter Sarah Bowman, we traveled to the Eastern Corn Belt region of Indiana, Ohio, and Kentucky. And USA Today reporter Sharice Jones sits down with economist and Georgetown professor Nada Issa. I don't think we should be expecting to go back to the prices that we had before the war or before the pandemic. I've been an environment reporter for the past five years now, and I've come to appreciate just how important this region is to producing food for the world. While Midwestern states are often considered flyover states, roughly one third of the world's corn and soy is grown here. Over the last two years, like everyone, farmers have had to endure supply chain disruptions. But this year, they say, skyrocketing costs of fertilizer and diesel fuel have made it a year like no other. This farm has been in our family over 100 years. In Western Ohio, about an hour from the Indiana border, I meet Dave and Ann Kress. Dave and his family farm 1,400 acres of corn and soy making them a small to medium-sized family farm. Given what you're facing this year with these input costs, like how does it make sense to be a farmer? It's really rough right now. I mean, the price of inputs right now are, is the highest they've ever been. I mean, you look at farm diesel, which was $2.35. It's now $5.76. Doesn't mean much to the local person. When you're buying 20,000 gallon a year, that is a whole lot more money and we have to come up with it somewhere. The pain compounded for farmers earlier this year when Russia invaded Ukraine, causing both the price of diesel and fertilizer to soar at the same time. For crops like corn and soy, farmers need nitrogen and potash fertilizer because it helps them get high yields. But both inputs are heavily produced and mined in Russia, and both were impacted by sanctions because of the war in Ukraine. In the entire history of farming, you know, you, you may have said, I'm going to have to cut back on potash because it's so high. But never before have I had a, a, a person tell me, you know, you go, to the, you go to buy it, and they go, we don't have it. So it's up 142%. That's if you have the cash to buy it right now and you can get it on your farm. Pretty much all our inputs are just flying off the roof. The scariest part is we don't know if we can get them. The price of corn and soy have a direct impact on grocery prices. Almost all processed foods contain one of the two crops, and more than 95% of animal feed is made from corn or soy. You know, we feed Europe, we feed the United States. Everything that you buy in the grocery store, except ketchup that comes in a bottle that is spreadable, is made from soy. Soy oil is blended in with diesel fuel too. Soybeans feeds the hogs feeds the cattle, it's the cheapest source of protein. Most of your plastics are made from corn now, right? I mean, everything that you buy is raised on a farm. So tell me a little bit more about that uncertainty that comes with farming. There was years that, uh, I mean, we lived on fruity pebbles and bologna, I'm not gonna lie. I mean, that's, farming is not a guaranteed income. There's nothing to say we're gonna make a dollar this year. One of the challenges of being a farmer is that every year there are high upfront costs that are usually financed through loans. These can be amounts in the millions. The way farmers make a profit and pay back the bank is by getting a high crop yield. 
But regardless of how much they spend on inputs, the farmers have no say in the price their crops are sold for. That's because prices are set by a publicly traded commodities exchange based in Chicago. We are the only industry that buys retail and sells wholesale. We cannot predict what the price of corn will be. We can't tell the consumer what the price of corn is going to be. Right now, for next year's season, if I want to get the best discount on seed, I have to pay the money now. I won't get a return on that money 14, 16 months. And now they're raising, you know, they're going to raise interest. They're raising our taxes. I mean, everything that we have is, is going off the roof. Thirty miles away on the eastern border of Indiana, Derek Moat runs a farm supply company that sells fertilizers, herbicides, and seeds directly to farmers. This has been the most stressful year I've ever had in the business this year. It was terrible. We fought the rain before, the dry weather, insects, but when you can't get the products at all and you need to get to the field to spray or spread, that's tough. There are so many inputs that go into certain herbicides. It's just be like cooking. You can't make the cake if you don't have all the ingredients. If we can't kill the weeds we need to kill, that could tremendously affect their yield. And when it affects your yield, it affects your income. How are all of these increased fertilizer costs impacting the farmer? The fertilizer, they have cut back. They said this is the only way we can see where we might be able to make a profit. But it's like anything else, if you don't have a good foundation down for your crops, you can have a problem quickly. We're concerned, we are really concerned. Uh, this is not an easy industry. People need to understand, we gotta have these farmers, we, we need them. They are so crucial to the whole economy, you know, to the United States and the world. The U.S. exports more food than any other country in the world. And as an industry, agriculture represents 5% of the American GDP. But over the past 15 years, the number of farms in the U.S. has been steadily declining, as small family farms find it challenging to survive. As a society, we're struggling with the potential of 8% inflation. And how do we pay for just our basics with that? If you've got 40% inflation, in your system, that's a whole nother ball game. And that's, that's what got some farmers very concerned. So tell me why you got into agronomy or you are an agronomist uh, instead of a farmer. Well, <laughs> it's a really good question. I actually went to college to get off the farm and I got into ag research and realized I can research how a crop grows, but I get paid whether that crop makes a yield or not. And I don't have to worry about balancing all the finances and the risk that does come with farming. I have so much respect for all of our farmers that are willing to take that risk year in and year out. What's made the price of fertilizer go up so much? Well, it's a lot of different factors in it. The big one was when, when Russia invaded Ukraine. It was right about the time when a lot of that nitrogen was supposed to be shipped to the Northern Hemisphere. And it led to some really, really high prices that farmers, if they were gonna grow corn, they had to have nitrogen fertilizer. With these disruptions, do you think that means continued higher prices in stores and restaurants? I, I think we're gonna see some disruptions in our food supply chain for a while yet. And so I think we're at least another 12 months of some disruptions in our food system. Crops that are grown here, I mean, they are ending up directly kind of on our grocery shelves and, and in our pantries and fridges. Can you, can you speak a little bit more to that? If you're going to buy a biscuit or a pancake mix or a cookie or a cracker, that's wheat that was milled in this region. If you're buying tortilla chips and some of those type of things, that was corn that was grown in this region. And so that's going directly into the market. While Chad has concerns about how this region is being affected by the fertilizer prices and shortages, he says we're not in crisis territory yet. There is a time in recent memory when farming was in crisis. In the 1980s, double-digit interest rates caused farmers to default on their loans. Many of them lost their farms, and some even took their own lives. 
The 1980s are probably why I am a professor and not a farmer. All of the farmers in our area were floating operating loans with 18% interest. We saw a lot of farm foreclosures. There was a gentleman in, in my hometown that I believe was fourth generation on their farm and, and he lost it. And you saw what that did to him, him psychologically as well. Uh, we're not at the 80s yet and hopefully we don't get to those type of interest rates. But when you see the inflation, you see the interest rates creeping up on us in the middle of production right now, it's, it's difficult. Today, farmers have one of the highest suicide rates in the country behind industries like mining and construction, and they make up just 1.4% of the American population. Two strips, one ground, one bacon. When I grew up, it seemed like everybody knew what farming was. Everybody was related to a farmer. Shoot two fillets. Yep, you guys have a great weekend. Most people, even the ones that come to the farmer's market, don't really know anything about what we do or how we do it. Jim Treach and his family are livestock farmers in Indiana. They own 17 pastures where they raise a few hundred free-roaming cattle. Livestock farmers have also struggled this year. High fertilizer prices have driven up the cost of corn and soy-based feed for animals. And like crop farmers, they also spend a huge amount of their budget on diesel. Our fuel we use in, in tractors for bell and hay, so there's always fuel costs there, hauling the hay back and unloading it. Last year we spent $50,000 in fuel. Um, this year, because of the fuel cost, we're gonna be closer to 100,000. Because of the business we're in, it takes us about a year and a half to two years to recoup our money. So we've got to come up with that money ahead of time. Most people, I would think, understand that, you know, coming up with 50 grand is not easy. You know, you're pulling it from savings accounts, you might be pulling it from retirement accounts, um, but you got to make ends meet and you got to get through it so you can continue going. Farmers like Jim also need hundreds of acres of land to raise animals. But just as high housing prices have impacted most Americans, land prices have impacted farmers. The price of land has went from, you know, when, when we could buy it for $7,500 to, to $9,000 an acre, and now, I mean, if you find land in Hampton County for under $15,000 an acre, you're, you're pretty lucky. The average age of the American farmer is 57 and the farmers we spoke with said they were concerned about a lack of young farmers entering the profession. Is an important goal for you to be able to pass this on to your sons and be able to have them continue on? Definitely. One of the main reasons I really got back into it was because my kids liked it. Because they liked it, we were able to grow it and stay just us as a family, running everything, doing everything. You know, I, I know Ty is gonna end up taking it over one day, probably when I'm 90 or 100, but it's hard to give up reins before that. Back in Ohio, 75 miles away, the Crest family is getting ready for one of the biggest events of the year, the Dark County Fair. All my friends, they like stay up later and stuff where as me and my family, we all go to bed at 10 because we get up at like six or seven every day to get stuff done. Webb and Tyler are the sons of Ann and Dave Cress. Their family primarily farms grain, but they also have 10 cattle that they've raised to sell at this year's fair. I know we'll always need agriculture, I'm just worried it's all gonna go to those large, big production farms that have hundreds of millions of acres. I'm worried that they're gonna start cutting out the, the little guys. What are some of the concerns or worries you have about being able to be a farmer? Trying to compete for land right now. A bunch of land's trying to get developed or you got uh, solar farms trying to come in and upbid everyone else on their land rent. I've been looking at getting some ground myself, but it's hard to justify the numbers. You don't want to overpay for something and regret it in the long run. I would love to bring my sons into this operation. The, the barrier to entry, the cost is so huge now that 
you know, we, we can't bring them in. What is that like for you to not know if you'll be able to pass it on to them? It's horrible. Me and her sacrificed for 25 years everything we did. I mean, we didn't go on vacations. We didn't do anything. Do I want my sons in this? Yes. Do I think the amount of stress and the pressure? Do I want them going through that? I'm not sure. I am one of the five youngest farmers in Miami County and I'm 52. Most farm family sons are not wanting to do this. They're leaving. And when that leaves, that knowledge is gone forever. What would you want the public to know about, you know, what you're experiencing right now? No one ever says, man, do you realize that guy you're talking to today feeds over 300,000 people a year with the products that he, you know, he makes? No one looks at us that way. I mean, I, I just like to be looked at that people say, hey, we need them. With the war in Ukraine raging on, the price of farm inputs has remained high and farmers say they're worried that next year could be even worse. We're gonna make it through this. I, that's just, just the way the farmers are. We will know, we will make it through it somehow, some way. If we gotta sacrifice, we sacrifice. That's just how it is. I mean, if it's 14, 16 hours a day, whatever it takes, we'll get it done. But it just feels like we, we could use a little help right now.